Welcome back to the Kimmy Kato show. We've got Tokyo Vice, uh, uh, who plays uh, Eugene Nomura, who plays Kobayashi, who is Oya Lan Yoshida's right hand Yakuza in to Tokyo Vice season two. The Yakuza, I had to look this up, also known as Gokudo, are members of the transitional organized crime syndicates originating in Japan. All right, so if you haven't seen Tokyo Vice, you got to check it out. Season one and two are on Max right now. Again, our special guest on the Kimi Kato show today is Eugene Nomura, and uh, again plays Kobayashi. Um, so here's the plot line. This is this this show is hot. I love it. Inspired by true account of an American journalist, Jake Adelstein, Tokyo Vice introduced the viewers to a neon washed world of the criminal underbelly of tokyo in season one and we met jake he's a determined young journalist who teamed up with detective katagiri to uncover a dangerous story about a deadly crime boss now in season two adelstein gets swept up in the underworld once again and he realizes just how much is on the line this time season two of tokyo vice also introduces new challenges and character growth well, through the storyline, it's a powerful story. It's leading to more complex and compelling storytelling. Um, their authentic locations, I love this, Kimmy and Eugene, play such a vital role in bringing this 90s world of Japan, uh, life in Japan and in Tokyo um, to the screen and to life, showcasing the detailed and immersive production design. So uh, what a unique, I mean, the 90s are hot again, and this is shot of the 90s, and it's just beautiful. Uh, Kimmy, I'm going to turn it back over to you, and welcome back, Eugene. Thank you. All right. Yeah, I wanted to really talk about Tokyo Vice. I saw the series. I saw the first season. I'm on to the second. Oh. Um, we're, we're halfway through, aren't we, I think? Um, yeah. I think we're on episode four. We just yes. finished. It's on every Thursday. Do check it out if you've not seen it. It's brilliant. It really talks about, I mean, it showcases Japan as a whole, but also talks the 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 underneath what you see uh, of of Japan. Japan you know, is seen the as the dark very, underbelly. Uh, yeah. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I mean, Japan is always seen as a polite, safe place that people want to go as a destination. People love Tokyo. Even the people in Japan love J Japan, but. You know, there's there's always the underneath. Um, mm -hmm. There's if there's a plus, there's a minus. If there's good, there's always bad. And um, Yakuza is deeply rooted in the Japan Japanese society. I can't talk much about it because I've not, I've, I've been away from, <laughs> I haven't grown up in Japan, but I do know about them. Um, I do have, actually, I do have friends in the police force that actually fight against. The yakuza's who mm. and, and they actually look like yakuza's it's interesting yes, how, how yes, these yes. and i'm talking about detectives that there are you know like ken watanabe on the film he looks like a yakuza but i've seen actual real police people like detective police force that, that who have to deal with these these organized crime syndicates they actually begin to look like them <laughs> um anyways sometimes, yeah they look they look even more sometimes yeah. than they look the gangster actual yeah it's it's interesting yeah. but um so eugene you are you play kobayashi yeah. who's oyabun's ishida's right hand guy mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um you look like a badass and uh um, <laughs> how did you get that role that role um Tokyo Vice, I have a I have a history with this actually. Uh, before this became a series, uh, this was a film project, and the original uh, producer, he's also the executive producer for this. Uh, his name's John Lesher. Um, we we spoke about this project years ago, uh, probably about uh, eight, probably close to ten years ago. Wow! And we actually did a recce, and we went to Japan. And we looked and I showed him the real Japan. Um, um, we had interviews. We went to see um, some tattoo artist in this real small place in a tatami mat. And when we went, 
I think it was an actual guy uh, with tat tattoos, and he looked pretty scary, but we were watching him getting tattooed. Well, anyway, there's a lot of uh, real stuff involved. So, and then... This was 10 years ago. I think so, yes. And it was supposed to wow. be a, a film um, at the time. And then things didn't work out at the time uh, because of the subject matter, because this is inspired by a true story. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a lot of... And Jake actually lives in Japan. We met with Jake and all that stuff. Wow. Um, so I was kind of more on the producing side, actually, in the very beginning. And then, and then uh, years passed, and then Lesher gave me a call, and he's like, uh, it's back up, but it's actually not a film. And uh, it might be good if I can get some advice about Japan. So sure. And that's kind of how I started. And then um, I was like, if you, you, know, you need good actors for this, because I know the project, I know it well. Um, and it's during my time when I was in Japan, actually. So mm. I know in that the 90s, era yeah, really well, because it's right when I was about 1920 around then. So it was after high school. I know all the places they are using for the shoots in Rapungi and this and that. That's where I grew up. Um, so it's it's intertwined with a lot of our personal lives, and then so. Uh, I had uh, them hire a casting director, which is actually my mother in Japan. Her name is Yoko Narahashi. She's, uh, she's been in the business for the longest time. She does all the, she brought all the Japanese actors to the U.S. in the beginning, with, with, including Ken Watanabe and from Last Samurai and all that stuff. But anyway, so, then, so they ended up uh, hiring her as a casting director. And I was like, okay, good luck. And then... Um, I heard about, uh, I had to bring, I think, a Japanese actor to Michael Mann. And then I ended up, he was like, audition. So I ended up auditioning right there and then. And then, and then he wanted me to uh, audition again. So I, I ended up auditioning several times. Uh, and at the time I was in Japan produce, helping produce Mass Singer for Amazon. Um, so I was doing that, and then they were still casting for um, Tokyo Vice in Japan. And then, and then I got called in again, <laughs> and I did it, and then I guess I got the part. And then uh, I was back in L.A., and they were like, can you, can you just go? So I'm like, okay. Um, so I flew back in to Japan, and that's when season one started. But there's a whole big issue with, with COVID at the time. And so we started shooting. Michael Mann was there, which was a dream come true because he was one of my dream directors. And he was awesome. He was just, he's brilliant. He's so good with the actors. It's, it's incredible. But anyway, so we started shooting. But, and then I think the first two weeks, COVID hit. So we had to stop. And so we stopped everything. So I, we, and then we flew back. And it just stopped for months and months and months. And then I think that was in January or February. And then we started... In 2020, right? Yeah. And then we started reshooting in November. But during that time, uh, because Japanese actors keep working constantly on TV, whatever, this, 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 um, there was a cast change. <laughs> like, And so now it's, it's more like fate. The guys that are in, in it now... You know, they got those roles with fate and they, you know, it's changed their lives working on an international series. But that's kind of one of the reasons how I joined and how I'm kind of hanging around that set all the time. How long did it take to film the first season? Um, so January and then about six months or so, I mm -hmm. think. Yeah. Timmy, do you mind if I ask a question? Absolutely. Go ahead. One of the things that I love about uh, Tokyo Vice is the English to Japanese and and vice versa. Um, did you guys ever see that movie Drops of God? The sake one. Dro yeah, it was yeah, like the wine. it was filmed in Japan. Yeah, wine. Yeah, yeah. wine. We, we yeah, did yeah. the casting for that too. Oh, you did. Yeah. I yeah. so that was the first time I'd really seen like English to French to Japanese, and it's so beautiful. 
And I actually really, it, and so it is in Tokyo Vice as well. I, I really love how, how that's, the, I don't know, you know, the sounds and the, and the translation is, I think it's so beautiful. It's, it actually adds a whole nother texture to the film. Yeah. So I think it's, it's, it's because, I mean, even Drops of God too, because uh, one of the producers for Drops of God, um, she's French and she's a good friend. Um, and so she, she's French, French, so she knows a lot about France. And so she knows how it's, you know, to mix cultures. Mm -hmm. um, in many, she's not just American in many ways. So with Tokyo Vice, John Lesher too, he studied in Japan for a while and stuff. So he knows Japan. So there's that respect for the cultures as right. well. So, and, and then you had Michael Mann who came in to Japan and he asked so many questions to I think everybody but he got and he wanted to be authentic and he, I mean that's why he was so great you know he would have this mm -hmm. he would watch it and then mm -hmm. and then come up with ideas how to direct it and stuff but he would be like no 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 forget all the you know explanatory stuff let's cut that stuff and let's get to it um, so it was I think you know the people that are or orchestrating all this are the ones that are in many ways bicultural as well so they have that that and plus to to keep it authentic is how to you know keep it real and to keep it right. good and so i think that the balance really worked out and it, you know now this day and age with the streaming it's it's like bicultural everywhere so yeah and it's so interesting it just adds a whole nother depth to it to the whole thing i think it's just um I don't know. I'm really enjoying it. Uh, so we got to take another real quick, quick break here. Um, but I wanted to, maybe we can think you guys can both, this is a question for both Kimmy and Eugene, from my perspective, kind of looking in here, you guys have a long term friendship and a deep respect for each other, but you really both feel like to me, you're trying to accomplish in a way in your own respected mediums, some of the th same goals, um, me being, um, introducing the two cultures right kimmy through music bringing bringing the music from japan and 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 vice versa american music to japan um and trying to break down walls within the entertainment industry and eugene you with uh, your films and your production work and your acting feels like you guys are doing the same thing in a way which must make for one of the reasons you're you're such great friends but i think that's so interesting and i'm wondering why both of you have that passion and that desire to do that, to bring kind of the two worlds together. And we can, maybe you can answer that on the other side of the break here. Okay. <laughs> All right. We, uh, it's a Kimmy Kato show. I'm Jeremiah. I'm hanging out with Kimmy. I'm a sidekick. He lets me hang out with him on the show for now. <laughs> Our special guest is Eugene Nomura. He's an actor and he's a producer. He's a voiceover artist. You can probably tell by his uh, really great voice. You can find him and follow him on Instagram. Keep 